Hi everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, bonsoir from the United States. And thank you for joining us on our journey to the chateau. I'm Stuart. And I'm Patrick. And you're joining us at a first chateau today that we have seen in 2019. It was a great experience and it taught us so much. So thanks for joining us and I hope you have fun watching this vlog. I would like to just address you real quickly the privacy in France and other European countries. We can we were not allowed to take video in the chateau. So therefore all you will see are stills that were provided to us by the realtor. Uh, and we have we you know you have to ex respect the privacy of the people who own the chateau. There were personal items so we were asked not to video and that has been true for multiple properties that we've seen those you will only see stills but uh, we, we're going to share with you as much as we can and i hope you enjoy it thank you one of the first properties for sale that we went to see in france was about one hour and 30 minutes southwest from paris in the town of chateaudun chateaudun is a beautiful town with its own hilltop castle and a population of about 13,000 people. The Chateau d'une Castle is considered to be the first chateau of the Loire for visitors coming from Paris. The castle features a combination of medieval, Gothic, and Renaissance architectural elements and was built between the 12th and 16th centuries. So one thing to point out is that the river that runs through Chateau d'une and also through the property that we looked at, it is called the Loire River. So in French, that would be called Le Loire. That is not to be confused with France's longest and more popular river, which is also called the Loire River. But in French, that one is called La Loire. Although the word Loire is pronounced exactly the same for both rivers, one is spelled with an E on the end, and they are two different rivers. Built on the foundations of a former Benedictine abbey at the end of the 18th century, this chateau offered a living area of about 300 square meters. It was constructed of stone and brick and topped with a slate roof that had been redone in 1998. The electricity, plumbing, and sanitary all were out of standard and were requiring an upgrade. The majority of the door frames and windows were old and single glazed. The chateau used town gas for central heating. The grounds were crossed by the Loire River and included a park, a potager, a poplar grove, and a wooded island with paths that completed the property for a total area of about three hectares. So to give you an idea of where everything on the property was located, the main gate was located in the lower right corner and there was a small park on the other side of the road that was part of the property. The chateau, the farmhouse cottage, the coach house garage, the greenhouse, the potager, the pedestrian bridge over the river, and the wooded island. Arriving at, at the chateau a couple of minutes early, we uh, were waiting for the realtor who then we got a text was running late. Uh, the gate was closed. Uh, the cleaning lady was supposed to come and open it, but she hadn't arrived yet either. And we were standing there and, and a gentleman took his daily walk, came by and uh, started talking, like um, French can talk very fast, and actually could hold a conversation, which surprised me very much, because I was very much convinced that I could speak no French at all anymore, having had it for seven years in school, but uh, it, it was really nice. That gentleman wished us a lot of luck, and by the time he had left, the realtor arrived. When you first enter the chateau on the ground floor, you're in the entrance hall. The first room on the right is a salon, and in the far right wing is a bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. To the left of the entrance hall was a living room dining room area, and in the far left was the kitchen. This is the entrance hall. Uh, 
floor was was redone completely with uh, white tiles in the 1980s and that's the staircase leading up to the first floor right and i think what we saw here was as far as what we sort of imagined for our own chateau i don't think that i didn't consider this to be quite grand enough for what we were wanting mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and it was very dark i mean there was a very narrow dark staircase and this was the only staircase in the house uh, some of the other, most other chateaus have some kind of a back staircase that may have been used for servants or something, but this was the only staircase in this house. Okay, from the uh, entrance, when you go to the right, you go into one of the salons. This is the Grand Salon to the right, uh, big reception room. It is, has four windows front, two in the front, two in the back. Uh, beautiful, beautiful space, beautiful floor. In this view of the salon, you can see the wood flooring, which in the listing was referred to as a double exposure parquet. That's not a term I'd ever heard for parquet flooring, but it was beautiful. That is the adjoining room, which used to be, or is the library, which was used by the former owner as her bedroom. There was a bathroom added to, to the back which had to be completely redone. Right. But very pretty room on the left side from the entrance hall was the salle de séjour. It's a living room slash dining room because it was right next to the kitchen. Very large room, a lot of light, front and back, beautiful views, very attractive. Unfortunately, the fireplace was not original, was redone at some point in a very rustic style, which I didn't particularly like in that setting. Right. Right next to that is the kitchen. And the kitchen is, in this case, a galley kitchen. The lens that was used to take this picture is very deceiving. This kitchen is not this wide. It was very interesting. Yeah. The kitchen was very, very narrow. I could just stretch out my arms and touch basically both sides. Not very, very usable uh, because half of the kitchen was the, the breakfast area or breakfast nook. Very dark, very dingy, not quite what we had envisioned. Right, and I think we had even talked about with the possibility that this might be a chateau we would consider, I think we even had like uh, conversations about how possibly we could make this kitchen bigger, you know, but you know, we've got, you've got the uh, fireplace behind the wall on the interior. And then there's really, there was no place to go on an exterior wall either. So it's pretty much, if you're going to have this as the kitchen, this is going to be your kitchen. So this is the first floor landing. It's, a bit dark and while the first floor was still in in very good repair this the, the second floor it wasn't quite as well kept up and further the third floor very much deteriorated uh, this had a, a best a bedroom a, a dressing room and a bathroom on the left hand side and two bedrooms and a toilet separate toilet room on the right part of the chateau. So if you look at the doorway on the left, you can see going into the, the bathroom. And this is the bathroom, quite unique uh, deco. Beautiful Art Deco, late Art Nouveau, early Deco bathroom with original tiles. Right. It was quite, quite beautiful. So when you went through the door in the bathroom, you went into the large bedroom on the first floor. This bedroom has complete wood paneling around. Very beautiful, uh, very attractive room, nice proportions. Yeah, I suppose out of all of the uh, all the bedrooms, this one probably had the most potential to uh, look what, like what we wanted. Uh, it had a pretty nice fireplace in it. It had wood paneling on the walls. Uh, but the ceilings here on this first floor were low. Yeah, and here is another bedroom on the first floor. The layout on the second floor of the chateau included two bedrooms and a full bathroom on the left side, 
and then two bedrooms and a water closet on the right side. So this is the first bedroom under the roof. Yes, this is the largest of the second floor bedrooms on the left side. And then this is one of the smaller bedrooms on the right side of the second floor. So this is the third full bathroom of the chateau. Good size. What this chateau did not allow for is the building of ensuite bathrooms per se. Right. Very difficult to get plumbing and, and not electricity, get, but to get the plumbing onto all these, these bathrooms, well, planned bathrooms or potential bathrooms. So th there was not enough potential for us to love the interior quite as much as we did love the exterior. The chateau has multiple outbuildings, including the old farm with a brand new slate roof, which is very pretty, uh, a nice garden. It has um, two bedrooms on the inside. However, uh, complete, needed to completely be rehabbed, which again is not a problem, but uh, takes some time. But it was very, very intriguing and very yeah. pretty. Yeah, it had a lot of potential. Uh, for being a jeet. Uh, we went to the upstairs, right? And the only thing I remember being up there was like a, a toilet, uh, there was a water closet maybe, and, and just a big open room, I think, basically yes. is all that was up there. The other outbuilding was uh, the former coach house with a workshop attached to it. Also a lot of potential, very pretty, uh, in good shape. Uh, the exterior, the interior, again, very much neglected. We had a lot of ideas of what we could do. Right. Then that had a beautiful greenhouse from the late 1800s with big double double French doors. So nice. Yeah. Uh, fell in love with it. Yeah, that had so much potential to be something really beautiful that you don't normally see on a lot of properties. The chateau had also a beautiful potager. So, which is uh, French for vegetable garden, um, fruit trees, I mean, really nice, very much um, a, a big selling point for, for us. Right. And most of the property, at least on the three sides that weren't on the river, was all completely walled in. Right. So there was a wall surrounding everything. And the building you see over there is actually at the top of the neighbor's building. The chateau had a beautiful backyard uh, sloping gently to the river with one very large cedar of Lebanon. Yeah, it's beautiful. And a lot of mature trees. Very, very attractive. However, one thing we were reminded of by the realtor is that the water in the winter when this rainy season can come up basically all the way almost to the chateau right you can kind of tell from this one photo that uh, the ground basically is flat all the way up to the La loire river so when we uh, went out to the back of the chateau we went down uh, to the river and kind of followed a path uh, that went to a back corner of the property and that was where there was a bridge that crossed over onto an island that also was part of the property. The island was very substantial, about two acres planted with poplar trees for wood production. Right. Just not very well situated because it was across from the next door neighbor's property. Right, so when you stood on the bridge and you looked upstream, there was a view of an old mill next door, which was very nice. And then when you turned around and looked downstream where the island was located, this was the view. And you can see the docks of you know, multiple houses along the river. Yeah, one of the downsides of this island was, although it seems like a very uh, romantic idea to have a property that has an island in the middle of a river, but in this case, when you actually uh, looked out the back of the chateau, you did not see the island at all. You actually had to go to the corner of the property, cross over the river, and then the island was basically further downstream, 
and it was across the backs of other people's properties. So basically anywhere you were on the island, when you looked back, you were seeing individual docks of the, of the neighbors. So we hope you enjoyed the chateau. It is a beautiful chateau. We, we love the facade. We love the, uh, the, the lot. It was walled in, had a potager of a vegetable garden already. We liked the outbuildings a lot. Right, I think we learned that this is, uh, uh, it was very urban. We had neighbors who were very close and so we really needed to find something that was more out in the country. Yes, yeah, so, so this yeah. was for us really a true learning experience. Right. It was great. Uh, so we, we saw something that we, we really enjoyed and we really liked. However, we, we could really see what we were looking for and what was not uh, for us. So having neighbors so close by, uh, we have multiple Irish Terriers. They can be barky. So <laughs> uh, we don't want to annoy the living daylight out of our neighbors. So you know, we want to be, be respectful. Um, the chateau itself didn't have much depth. So the kitchen was tiny. It was a, a long kitchen, well, relatively, right. a galley kitchen. And it, it seemed like it was, from the outside anyway, it seemed like it was a very large chateau. But actually, uh, when you really looked at it, it really wasn't that large. I mean, the the, the ground floor actually only had four rooms, right? And so yes. It really wasn't that large of a chateau when you really looked at it. So be, beware of the lens that the realtor uses <laughs> to take <laughs> pictures yeah. for, for the listing. It's, it's true. I mean, it was, uh, it, we were so intrigued by the pictures. Yeah. Um, and when we got there, it was just not what we were looking for. So we just decided this is not for us. Right. And I think that's that's a fair, you know, it, it's fair. It's everyone has to to search until they find whatever they're truly looking for. Right. And that was not for us. So we're moving on, and then we'll see you at the next chateau. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.